Good day. Not every game is made to appeal to every gamer. Some games will have a higher barrier of entry than others. Super Mario Brothers, Doom, those games can appeal to a wider audience because they have a very low barrier of entry. Super Mario Brothers has quick and easy to understand gameplay that even a gaming journal can figure out most of the time. Doom is a little harder, but it is still easy enough to understand that people with IQs higher than a gaming journal can figure it out in, you know, a few minutes. Other games, like say Harpoon or Arma, will be just a little more difficult for gamers to figure out, and thus they only appeal to the most hardcore of gamers that really enjoy the challenge of the interface and the gameplay. Today, we're looking at one such hardcore game, Aliens Dark Descent. I'm going to be as fair as possible to this game because I can tell thee this, dear viewer, I did not like this game and the only reason I am reviewing it at all is due to the Aliens license. And that if it did not have that, I wouldn't have touched it with a 10 foot General Lots pole. So let's begin. Aliens Dark Descent was developed by Tindloss Interactive and published by Focus Entertainment and released in 2023. Various media outlets will call this game a real-time strategy game, and I can kind of see it, but for me it's more of a real-time tactics game. Yeah, there are some similarities to the real-time strategy genre, but you do not control an entire army of units at one time. Instead, you control a four-man squad of colonial marines as you try and complete a variety of objectives. This game has a great deal in common with the XCOM series of games. However, unlike in those games, combat takes place in real time instead of turns. Most of the time. There are two different gameplay types to be found in Aliens Dark Descent. You have the administrative gameplay and the combat gameplay. Admin gameplay takes place on the ship. On the ship you have to research upgrades, heal units, and then select what mission you want to do. This part of the game is turn based, as you have to wait a turn to complete research, let a marine heal, etc. The enemy, like in XCOM, gets a turn as well. This is expressed by the planetary infestation level. After each turn it gets higher and higher and this means more enemies in the field. So after you do all the admin it's time to deploy and you deploy a four man squad. You have a certain number of marines to choose from and this number can increase as you find survivors in the field and can decrease as marines get wounded or die. Each marine can be upgraded and each will level up as you use them on missions. Marines will also have flaws that will diminish their effectiveness. In the field you control them in real time and combat takes place in real time as well. This gameplay takes place from the top down perspective and you use the mouse or controller to send your marines where you want them to go or attack enemies and each marine will have a health bar and a limited number of aid kits. The squad will also have what are called command points and these will allow you to use special abilities. Your objectives will vary as you go through the game. Sometimes you have to rescue someone or gather 20 xenomorph asses. The usual stuff. Combat is where the game gets tricky. The motion tracker will give you plenty of warning before a xenomorph attacks and you can track the xenomorph movements before they get to grips with you. The xenos in this game are very bloody fast and take a bunch of hits before going down and sometimes they can explode in a giant acid cloud. If a marine takes too much damage they can go down and sometimes they can even be drug away to be implanted by a face hugger. The Xenos come in heavy numbers as well and it's very easy to get overwhelmed. The reasonable marines get stressed out as they fight xenomorphs and will fight less effectively if their feelings get hurt. Sometimes throughout the game you have to build them a safe space for them to de-stress. You do this by finding a specific room that has a prompt that tells you to weld a number of doors to create the safe space. When your marines rest you save and create checkpoints. The game thankfully has decent checkpoints outside of the safe spaces, so in theory saving won't be what makes you want to stop playing the game and chuck the controller out the window. The game features bosses and they have to be attacked strategically in order for you to survive. As you kill more xenomorphs, the hive gets more angry and will eventually start sending more and more xenos to attack, and sometimes you'll have to face a massive attack! Hope you packed enough ammo! Alright, that's your lot ladies and gentlemen. It's a pretty well made XCOM clone with real time combat. If you like what you see and what I said, you're welcome to it on whatever platform you choose. Graphically, on the PC at least, it looks pretty alright, I guess. It's a top down low budget game and they use their budget well. The Marines do look a little rough around the edges, but that is to be expected sound is pretty good and everything sounds sufficiently spooky and the music is everything you want from an aliens game these devs actually got the music right it sounds epic where it needs to be and creepy where it should be story is 
Okay, I guess. Aliens get dropped on a station by a cult. One Xeno kills everyone on the station, but the intrepid administrator. She uses the Cerberus protocol to kill a bunch of ships and then blows a marine ship out of orbit in order to stop the Xenomorph, I guess, or just start the plot. Uh, also, hope the uh, Cerberus protocol never gets hacked by an enemy. The administrator murderer gets rescued by a group of marines, and the colonial marine vessel that got filled full of missiles is able to crash land on the planet. It's now up to Corporal Dude and the murderer to get everyone off the planet before the Xenos kill everyone. The opening is dumb, but the rest of the game is more like the classic 90s comic slash novels, so if you can enjoy the gameplay, the story should be worth it. So what is the fatal flaw that makes me not like the game? Why, it's the gameplay, of course! It frustrated me to the point where I stopped finding the game fun and more an exercise in torture. So the real-time combat is just where the game lost me. The Marines are too slow and the Xenomorphs are too fast. It's hard not to take damage, the Marines are always getting stressed out. If this game had turn-based combat, I would have had a bit more fun, as I would have had more time to react to the Xenomorphs. As it is, I never had time to get my guys into position, and thus I kept getting eradicated over and over again. I get the feeling that you're supposed to set up ambushes and take down Xenomorphs that way, but I never got a chance to do that. This is a game that requires you to fully get it and get good sun. I can see the appeal, but in my personal opinion, I hate it. It just seems like I cannot control my dudes in combat, and thus I am glad I will never have to play the game ever again. When I first saw the trailer, I knew that me and this game wouldn't be getting along. I hate top-down games at the best of times, and this is most assuredly not the best of times. The gameplay, the BS, and all the piddly crap combined to make this game about as fun as Arma or Harpoon for me. With that in mind, I like real-time strategy games, like Star Wars Empire at War, Sins of the Solar Empire, but the lack of control you have over your dudes just ruins the entire experience for me. Unless you are a fan of XCOM-style games, I can't really recommend this game. I really want a good Aliens game, people! It's been so bloody long, and it looks like that wait is not over yet. And so I am General Watts, wishing you good AVP Extinction and good Sins of a Solar Empire, or whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and please consider leaving a like or a comment, as the algorithm desires your soul. And I want to thank all those fans who have supported this channel, both past and present.